Greetings, it's Vagram, back with the final mod guide installment for Blood Magic. Now we've covered everything from Tier 1, all the way over there, to Tier 5, Demon Summoning, Rituals, Bound Armor, Bound Weapons, Wells of Suffering, Rituals of the Feathered Knife, everything, even Sigils, somewhere in between, and how to get your altar upgraded to Tier 5. Well... That's not all. There's still some left in Blood Magic, and I'm hoping you're going to be amazed. One of the things I want to tap into first is the brewing system right here at the base of my giant blood altar. I have an alchemic chemistry set set up. Now, what you're going to want to do is get some ordinary glass bottles right there and put them into your blood altar. They will turn into... Potion flasks. Now it does say eight of eight charges left, but there's no effect. Just go with it, basically. What you have to do is get that and put an effect onto it. Now, here's the thing where it starts getting crazy complex. Basically, there is a long, long list of potions you can make with this. And you're going to need potion flasks, of course. I'm just going to grab one at random. You're going to need standard binding agent. Now, this is very, very important. You have to make a weak binding agent. Use some Sanctus and Crystallis. These are all stings. Crystallis, uh, Crystallos and Sanctus are both used. They're both created using chemistry, the alchemy, for the demon summoning. So you're probably going to have some of this on hand, or you're going to want to at least have it on hand. Now, weak binding agent is basically two simple catalysts. You should have a lot of that also, and some clay. That gives you a weak binding agent. So you're going to need standard binding agent. This is very important. It's one of the key components that you're going to be using. And then you also have lengthening catalysts, because there's mundane, average, and greater, and power catalysts. Now these are not necessary, but they're helpful. Basically, you get some of that weak binding agent again, some simple catalyst and some glowstone gets you a, a mundane power catalyst. If you do a lengthening catalyst, it's redstone. Basically think in terms of brewing. In normal potion brewing, you use redstone to boost the length of a spell and you use glowstone to boost the effect level from speed one to speed two, so on and so forth. It's the same thing here, but you're going to have to make some of these to really do that. But just to prove that you don't really need it starting off. We'll skip that. Now, I'm going to get a bucket of water. I've got my binding agent right here and my empty flask. We go over here. I have my alchemic chemistry set plus magician's blood orb right here. You are going to, basically, you put an empty potion flask in there. You put your binding agent and what you want to bind with it and just give it a moment. After a few moments, you'll get a water-breathing potion. Now, the bucket was consumed, but I think that's okay. There's a water-breathing potion with two minutes left. If we wanted to, I'm going to get another bucket and some lengthening catalyst right here. I'll just get one. We're going to put this potion back in. We're going to tell it we want to make the potion effect longer, and we're going to tell it which potion effect to make longer because it won't assume it needs to be told. And then we get from two minutes up to five minutes and 20 seconds. That's real nice. And it's a good way to get some water breathing potions also. Now, I have eight swigs of this. And if I ever run out, I have an empty flask. I can just rebrew it. So for one bucket of water, some standard binding agent, and an empty flask, you can get... Eight two-minute breathing un underwater breathing potions. That is real powerful. Now, here's the thing that gets even wilder. I'm going to go back over here. We have sugar. In standard brewing terms, sugar is used to boost your movement speed. So what I'm actually going to do is get sugar. We're going to get one more of these, and I'm actually going to need two sugar. I'm going to put a potion in. Sugar. Standard binding agent. Now, this gets dangerous. Ah, it worked. 
every time you add a set, an additional effect beyond the first one, you end up basically risking an explosion. Now, the explosion won't do damage to blocks, but it will do damage to you. And since you're standing right in front of this chemistry set, you're really going to get hit in the face. And it's going to hurt. Now, I have one that's got water breathing. What I'm also going to do, actually, is let's really give it a boost. We're going to put this back in. Lengthening. And some sugar. Now, it's only when you bind an additional effect. Boosting the effects does not risk explosion. But when you do add additional effects, you really do have to be careful. And I think this is going to shorten speed back out. It is. But basically, we have 40% speed increase for 2 minutes and water breathing for 5 minutes, all in one potion. And that potion has 8 shots. That means you've got what? Um, that is four shots for 20 minutes. You have 40 minutes worth of water breathing. That More than 40 minutes worth of water breathing. It's pretty powerful. So I'm going to get that and put that right down there. I'm going to get another potion. I'm going to get a blank slate. And let's go down here to, let's say, a fermented spider eye. If I do, let's see, empty effect potion, standard binding agent, spider eye. What's going to happen? We should get a potion of poison. But here's the thing. We don't want to have to drink this, and we can't trick our opponents into drinking it. Well, if you get this potion and put a blank slate in with it, you'll get... Caution! Contents are throwable. 22 seconds of weakness. I think we can do better than that. Let's get fermented spider eye greater, actually, you know what, let's really put the screws on somebody, we're going to put the potion in, we're going to lengthen the effect, and we're going to tell it which effect to lengthen, now that's seven minutes of weakness on an opponent, if we wanted to, we could even make it nastier, let's boost the effect, and tell it which effect I want to boost. That is 53 seconds of weakness. Just for the sake of seeing what it's going to be like. Let's see if we can lengthen this tier 2 effect. That's weakness 4 applied to somebody. There we go. Is that No, that's maximum amount of time. Minus 2 to all attack damage. And basically... I have eight throws in one bottle. And then I can just take it back to my alchemy set and rebrew it. Let's do another one. Let's grab a flask. We've got our binding agent. I'm going to get a feather. Actually, I'm going to do two feathers. And let's see what feathers do, shall we? We're going to put in our binding agent and a feather. Let's see. We get a potion of flight. Eight charges, one minute. Let's lengthen that effect and tell it which effect to lengthen. We're going to get 18 minutes of fly time. Eight doses. That's actually three seconds shy of 19 minutes. Yeah, that's some powerful stuff. Now, I'm going to show you I have shown you some possibilities, and you can put multiple effects, but with every additional effect, you risk a boom that will kill you, probably. So be careful. One effect per potion is completely safe. When you start doing multiple effects like this, this is when you're risking it. But basically, here's what happens, okay? To add an effect, you need the binding agent. Once you have effects on there and you want to boost it, you have lengthening and power. This makes it the effect last longer. This makes the effect itself more, makes it more powerful. So uh, faster flight speed, faster run speed, et cetera, et cetera. Now, there's a lot of stuff. If you look at all of these, let me just move some of these out of the way here. Actually, I'm going to put these 
over here. So these are all the positive effects and these are all the negative effects. There's poison, weakness, and slowness. And of course, you can get all of these and put them into one flask if you want to risk it that has a blank slate added into it to make it a splash potion. And of course, you can use splash potions on health stuff too, on beneficial stuff. Um, you have, let's see, Terra, when added into a potion, will give you, this is actually, instead of the normal speed, the vanilla speed buff, this, Terra, gives you the same speed buff as the Haste Sigil, which means your forward movement is faster, but side to side is not. Very, very specific. If you brew a potion with an arrow, it's reciprocation. It's basically a damage reflection shield. Um, that's very nice, very, very beneficial, especially for boss fights or demon fights. Now, you actually have weak blood shards. That gives you an absorption buff. It gives you some extra health to absorb damage. Demon blood shard is a health boost. It raises your maximum health, I believe. Poisonous potato is saturation. You can literally turn a poisonous potato into regen for your food bar. I think that's very powerful and very effective. Diamond gives you resistance. The vanilla buff, resistance. Real nice way to get it, too, if you don't have any other method of getting it. There is the ender pearl. Now, the ender pearl is something called planar binding. Basically, what this means is if you brew a potion with this, it prevents you from being teleported at all. Full stop, I think. Magma Cream is, of course, a vanilla mechanic that gives you fire resist. Golden Carrot gives you night vision. You have the Blaze Powder. Now, Blaze Powder actually gives you a damage boost. It basically makes you hit harder. Glass Bottle. This one's fun. It's invisibility. You have the Feather for flight, as we've seen. There's Ether. This is one of the alchemy components used for demon and elemental summoning. Ether actually gives you a jump boost. I think that's real cool. Now, here's the thing. I'm not 100% sure if it gives you a fall damage prevention boost. So you might want to be a little careful with that and test it some first. Of course, guest here is going to be regeneration. Glistering, glistering melon is health, speed, and then redstone is a mining speed boost. It boosts your dig speed. I think that's very cool. And of course, water bucket, water bucket is water breathing. All of these are super nice and super beneficial. If I wanted to, let's get a couple of those. A couple of those. And, oh, let's see. A couple of those. We're going to get some of that. An empty flask, and we're going to do one last brew. Now, I'm going to have to do this several times. So, instant health, right? We're going to put regeneration in there. Is it going to blow up? No, it worked. And now, to really push my luck... Uh, there we go. So I not only pushed my luck too far, I lost the potion and the ingredients. That's what happens. So this is the potion brewing system. Now, I, I don't have one single document in one single place that is going to tell you the shortcut for all of this. What I can tell you, though is that this world is going to, an updated version of this world is going to be downloadable so you can actually get this and experiment right here yourself on your own terms. Put yourself in creative mode so you don't blow your face off and just experiment with different combinations, lengtheners, boosters, the whole nine yards. You'll get used to it. It really is a great spell system and I am completely impressed, or potion system, and I'm completely impressed with what you can do with this. Having a potion that gives you water breathing and speed, that's pretty powerful. I really do like that. That's neat. Or having a potion that gives you splash regen and instant health. Think about that for all those mod packs that have dungeons in them. 
You have eight charges that you can carry with you in one slot for you and your buddies. That's real good. So, yeah, I expect that I'm going to have to get into this a lot more in other mod packs. That is the brewing system. Now, I did cover everything, but I didn't really show everything off. Because I really do encourage you to just load up a world and try some combinations. Everything that you need is right here. These are all the potion effects. These are the positive ones, so these are the negative ones, uh, plus water is a positive. Uh, these are all the basic components you need. You need this to add an effect to a flask. You need these to boost the effects or the time length of the flask, of the effect. And um, splash, make something splash, that's it, right there. And then, of course, once you empty out a flask, it will just show as empty. You put it back in the brewing stand and start adding all over again. Simple. And it's very, very impressive, but that's not where blood magic stops. No, we have what's called the basic spell system. Now, before I go over this stuff right here, I want you to see this. Yeah, that's 36 different possible combinations, and I will explain exactly how. Basically, what you have to do First, of course, you've got your normal blood altar. That's part of the equation. You probably made a lot of these already by now, so you're used to that. Then you get a, gl a glass block. You put it into your blood altar, and you will get a unbound crystal. Then you're going to want to make one of these, a spell table. It's going to use an apprentice blood orb, a blood, rich, a blood rune, I'm sorry. Then it's just four stone, three red wool. That's it. It's nice and simple. Now, once you got these components, what are you going to do with it? Well, you need creature heads, basically. You need monster heads, specifically zombie, creeper, skeleton, and wither skull. Now, you put these side by side, and you are going to change the effects dynamically. So, like, for each row, everything on this row is flint and steel. Just like everything on that row is ice blocks. So, a zombie head with a flint and steel... And then you get this, bind to it, and you'll see coordinates for that spell table. Sets mobs on fire around the player. Uses a little bit of blood, and you'll hear. So I think if I go over here, let's see if we can get a skeleton real quick. Oh, come on, guys. There we go. Yep, there we go. Set him on fire with a right click. Nice and simple. I love it. So basically, you're getting a blood altar and a spell table. You put the modifier in the altar and then the creature head on the, on the spell table. You just right-click that spell table with your unbound crystal. Now, here's what I encourage. You figure out these combinations, and you get this, put it in an altar, spend the five experience to rename it. You will always know that that is going to be AE Fire. Just rebind it and rename the crystal, and you'll thank me later, because you're going to end up with a lot of these, because they're very, they're very utilitarian. Now, Flint and Steel... With the zombie, you set mobs on fire around the player. With creeper head, it sets a 3x3 three three area on fire centered on you. With the skeleton head, 3x3 three three area set on fire centered on a projectile. So now, you see? If you are on a PvP server, I can see that as being very beneficial to be sure and then wither skull this one's even nastier you can't spam these things willy-nilly make sure you've got some life points in your blood network until you get higher up in the tiers because experimenting with this at lower levels while easy can also be dangerous it should be noted if you fire off a spell and you have no life points in your blood network no matter what the game settings are all your stuff will drop on the floor and you will die Unless you're in creative mode. But if you're in survival mode, even if you have keep inventory set on, 
you'll die and all your stuff drops onto the floor where you died. So that's something to keep track of, something to be very, very careful of. I'm going to put that over there. So now that's just flint and steel, right? There is ice blocks. Creates a 5x5 five five wall or floor of ice blocks. You can right-click and rebind that. Well, oh, there we go. So now we can actually use this to create walls of ice spontaneously. Now, if you had a silk touch pick, you could actually use this to harvest ice. If you were so inclined, basically turning blood from your blood network into ice blocks. Now, that's with the zombie, with the creeper head, freezes water in a 5x5 five five area. With the skeleton, mm, saw a glitch. With the skeleton, it's a projectile that does 5 to 6 damage. With the wither skull, it's a five horizontal projectiles that each do five to six damage. Wither Skull is universally, it seems, the skeleton, but worse. It seems that way to me. There's TNT. Now, with the zombie head, an explosion centered on the player affects only entities, ignores armor, and damages the player himself for one health. Now, that means you only take one health. Everything else around you is an explosion that ignores armor. I could really see this as being great for boss fights or PvP. Uh, but be careful, because this probably ignores... Uh, if it ignores damage and you have PvP turned on, but you're doing friendly dungeoneering, you could kill your party mates with that. Um, let's see. Creeper. Large explosion centered on the player affects blocks and entities but it also hurts the player. This one seems dangerous. Skeleton, a TNT-sized explosion on projectile. I'm curious. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Projectile TNT, ladies and gentlemen. Then there's the Wither Skull, blows up an area in front of the player. Uh, I think this one's dangerous also, and it also hurts the player. Now, all of these are different combinations. There is... The Gas Tear, Glowstone Dust, Water Bucket, Obsidian Block, the Ender Pearl, and finally, the Apprentice. Is it Apprentice? It is Apprentice Blood Orb. So there's a lot of combinations. Nine combinations per head. Four different kinds of heads. 36 total. Took me a while to figure that math out. Uh, I will be linking in the description below a list to a web page, a wiki entry that's still valid. And it lists every single combination of these so you can actually look for yourself. Plus, you're going to have this world download, which means you will be able to see for yourself exactly which one of these and experiment. I can get this crystal. Actually, I should probably get... What happens if I do this? Nope, don't want that. I'm going to get an unbound spell crystal. Put it right back there so you can pull that off the actual pedestal and experiment with it yourself. That's going to be really, really good. Um, yes. By the way, a lot of people don't know. The Orb of Testing. It's creative mode only. If you right-click, it puts one million life points into your blood network. So when you step onto the map, just grab one of these. Go into creative mode. Give yourself some life points and you'll be good to go for all of this testing. A lot of people don't know that. So yeah, 36 different spell combinations. It's just enough to have one in every slot of your inventory and have an arsenal of spell capabilities at your disposal. If you're going to have more than one of these that you ever use, I really do highly recommend that you consider getting uh, the spell crystals renamed. This is one of my favorites right here. Creeper Head, Glowstone Dust. It fires a projectile, and whatever that projectile hits gets struck with lightning. Lightning doesn't do a lot of damage, but oh boy, is it really, really effective at long range. I really do like it, and it's pretty easy to precision snipe mobs. It's one of my favorites. You've got stuff that does movement. You can drown people with water effects. Uh, this one creates a 5x5 hollow stone cube centered on the player. There's even a little glass block in the ceiling for you to look out of. So that's kind of defensive. Zombie head plus obsidian block. Uh, turns water into dirt 
or sand within four blocks of the player, which means you can walk across rivers or oceans, really. Um, damage, uh, fires a damage eight projectile and does slowness for three for four seconds. This, nine projectiles for three damage each projectile and slowness three for four seconds. There's lots of really randomly teleports a mob. Randomly teleport, oh, teleports player to the projectile. If it hits a mob, you swap places. Uh, let's see. Yeah, randomly teleports mobs surrounding the player. Uh, randomly teleports players. Yeah, it's really crazy stuff. This one's nice for AE damage, but if you have PvP on, you'll kill your buddies, so be careful. Large explosion surrounding the player only hits entities. That's nice. That means you can kill people without having to kill your base. Projectile that does 8 damage. 5 damage AE attack directly in front of you. That's nice. There's a lot of different spell combinations. But here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is only the basic spell system. This is the simple one. To get all of this stuff, you all what you need, basically, to get every single spell, you need 36 blood altars, 36 spell tables, you need 9 zombie heads, 9 creeper heads, 9 skeleton heads, 9 wither skulls, 4 flint and steel, 4 ice blocks, 4 TNT, 4 gas tears, 4 glowstone, 4 water buckets, 4 obsidian blocks, 4 ender pearls, and 4 apprentice pearl uh, orbs. And basically, if you did that, you would have every combination, and you could get 1 or 2 crystal orbs and swap them out however you want to. Pick and choose your effect. But that's a lot of resources to gather, and a whole lot of monsters to kill. But, I think it's an impressive system, and that's not even where we're finishing off. What we have next is the advanced spell system. Now, I left us a large slate of space back here, specifically to work with. Because I expect that this is going to take up a lot of real estate. Basically, this comes in components, right? One thing you're going to need, you get your basic spell crystal, the one that you were using for those. You put it in here, unbound spell crystal, two weak blood shards. I tell you, I keep telling you guys, you need a lot of these, and you'll see why now. Gold ingot and diamond. If you put an orb right here, you would actually get a complex spell crystal. I'm actually going to put that back. You're going to need that. Go away. You're definitely going to need that for this system. Basically, this is a multi-part custom spell system. Now, there's the basic spell mechanic itself. Do you want to make a projectile? Do you want something that will augment yourself? Or do you want something that will work within melee? Those are the three basic components, right? Then you go to what effect you want to do. Crucible of fire. That's going to be a fire effect. There's an ice effect. Wind effect. And then there's earth. And then there's the next step. You basically do the modifier. You have default, offensive, defensive, and then environmental. Now you get onto the really crazy stuff. There are spell power. This basically increases the intensity of the spell. Oh, no. Empowerer. Yes, so that increases the range of the spell itself. That increases the intensity of the spell, how strong it is on the effect. This modifies spell cost. These are dampeners. You have empowerers to boost the spell power itself, and then you have augmenters to increase the intensity of it. So then you have spell cost. Now, this reduces the actual life point cost itself. And what you're seeing here, these are different. These are all separate effects, right? Wind, these are crucible of fire, ice, earth, etc. These are all separate effects. When you start here with this, these go up in strength. There is unstable, that's the lowest and least effective, tier one. There's tier two, the standard spell empowerer, reinforced, imbued, and finally demonic for tier five. That is the most powerful. And it's the same over here. The most powerful of the dampeners that reduces cost is the demonic. Most powerful of the augmenters is demonic. All the way down to unstable, unstable, unstable. So these right here are kind of different than this half. 
and it really does mean you have to have this, one of these, one of these, and one of these, okay, from one of some of these categories, and then over here, all of these are separately counted, and I'll explain all of this later. So basically what I'm going to get, I'm going to start off with particle. I want to go to, let's say, fire, and I'm going to make this offensive. I want to hurt somebody. We're going to start off with that initially, and I've got my complex spell crystal right here. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm actually going to grab this. This thing is called a buffer or a spacer. Basically, it is a spell conduit, and that's what it does. It does nothing other than let you connect all of these. Now, before I go on with this, I'm just going to show you. All of these things are made with components that you actually have to custom craft. Stone braces require reinforced slates and iron ingots, right? An unattuned core. This requires crafting. There's a lot of stuff that comes into play from the alchemy system, like Simple Catalyst. So you really are going to have to make all of this stuff. So just remember, there are recipes and any eye for all of these things. Way of Time has done a wonderful job doing integration into NEI for everything. So just take your time, step through the parts, see how you have to craft them. But I can tell you right now that there are multiple crafting steps just to make the parts to make one of these. So an entire spell chain is going to have a lot of parts to it. Do not get dissuaded. It's a slow buildup, and I'll show you why. When you put something down, I'm going to start with the paradigm first, is what it's often called, whether it's particle, self, or melee. I'm going to start off with this. Now, here's what you have to do. You'll notice it orients itself a certain way. If you right-click, that is the output end, basically. This is going to output power to another connecting block. In this case, we're going to put one of these down. You have the output and shift right click does the input now the spell conduit doesn't care it has no defined input or output it just connects so i'm just using it as a visual spacer basically so things don't get so crowded looking this has no input only output that's why doing shift right click does nothing so then i'm going to go to the actual effect itself fire the crucible of fire again empty hand I'm going to shift right click and adjust the input, that's the darker one. Right click to adjust the output, that's the lighter one. Spell conduit. And then the last thing we've got right here, actually, and we're going to start with that. Let me kill that. So what you do, you come down here to the beginning, you get your complex crystal and right click right there. Now what you'll see is it's bound to a set of coordinates and dimension. So now we are shooting fire projectiles. Now here's the thing. Let's get a spell conduit. Oh, I had that right the first time. There we go. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to get, oh, let's say spell power. I'm going to get a tier three. Tier 3, one of those, and a Tier 3, one of those. So this is an Empowerer. It's going to increase the severity, the uh, the, the strength of the spell overall. Uh, that's like range, how far it goes, how far it affects something. Now that is dark down here. I'll show you, right-clicking, see where this tiered point is? That's the input. And it's always the darker to lighter, basically. And then right click. You can see that moving around. Let's curve this this way. Spacer. We're going to do... That was empowering. This is going to increase the intensity. i got to adjust it. So shift, right click. There we go. That tier point is, go is the input. And I'm going to do that for the output. 
Let's put one of these down again. Shift for the input. Output's fine. And then finally, spell cost. That's already up down. I'm going to leave that. That's good. Now, real quick, if you had a room of these, a lot of people are going to start wondering if they're modern art installations. <clears throat> Here's the key, right? Once you set this down, this is the block that the blood crystal is bound to. I mean the uh, spell crystal. Just like on those tables, when you bind it to a spell table in the next area, the spell table is what it's bound to. If that spell table moves or gets moved, it stops working because whatever is at that coordinates is gone. This is the same way. You're binding to the coordinates of this block right here, which means if this gets moved, you can change all the rest of this. If this gets moved, it stops working. So now I'm going to rebind, and I have a stronger. Now this is just a fireball. We basically have a lot of other combinations that we could do. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to ditch all of this. Let's start from scratch again. And I'll show you exactly. Now, there is a list that I have been given by the gentleman in the uh, Blood Magic IRC channel. It is a text list. It's on Pastebin. That is basically all the different combinations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of those. I'm going to get Melee. Uh, let's see. Earth. And let's do, um, let's see. Oh, defensive looks like a good one. Let's do defensive. And I'm going to do uh, one of those and one of those. Let's go over here to our blank workspace. We're going to start off again with the paradigm. Let me put it up here. Right click. We're going to put the output that way. Then we do the element or the effect itself I'm going to just output with right click shift right click is input always shift right click is input right click is output then I'm going to put down the defensive modifier shift and then normal right click I'm going to put down an empowerer empowerer -er -er. and finally an augmenter right click Shift, right click. I'm going to get my complex spell crystal. Right click to bind. If that's not cool, I don't know what is. Basically what it's doing is it's lifting up blocks that are directly underneath where I'm hitting and turning it into a wall. If there's wall already there, it makes it go away. I'll make sure and lower the sound in this area because it's pretty loud when you normally hears it, hear it. And as you can see, it just takes a little bit of practice, but you could pop up walls of defensive nature real quick. And uh, I really like the capability of this as a defensive thing for like, say, dungeon crawls or uh, even PvP. Set up a wall real quick to hide behind if you get ambushed. It's very nice. Now, all I have to do, let's say, I'm going to ditch this offensive. Let's get, let's say, um, oh gosh, default. Let's go with that. Now, if I rebind this crystal, you see there's gaps right around here. From where this is actually... Yeah. So I can actually make all of these. There's gaps under the ground, and I'm returning these things back to their rightful place, basically. Um, I think. Yeah. I think this is very cool. 
There we go. Back to normal. I think that's very neat. So basically, when you do change one component, when we did <clears throat> defensive, it t teleports up the blocks from underground. And if we do default, it turns them into the sand-like property. It causes them to fall right back down again. Now, power affects the range of this. Now, this is already a melee spell, but it affects the severity of the range. And this affects basically potency, affects the radius, how big of an area it covers. So, yeah. Now, here's the thing, right? I could have... Let's do... three of those in a row. What is going to happen? And I tell you what we can do. Let's go back to default. And go back to defensive. What happens? Defensive. Let's shift right click for input. Right click for output. Rebind. That's a bigger wall. That's a lot bigger wall. Now, why is that happening? What I'm doing is actually putting three tier three augmenters in a row. The radius of effect is getting larger. Here's the thing though. You can only go up within each group, right? Augmenters check. And the first augmenter looks to see if there's anything behind it in front of it that's another augmenter. If it is basically going up, so let's say this was tier one, tier two, tier three, that's fine. The pipe gets wider, as it was explained to me. But if I went tier three, tier two, three, or tier one, well then basically tier three is going to take effect and it's going to ignore the other ones. So you have to make sure you tier up in order from start all the way out to finish. Now this is not just for augmenters. The same thing goes for dampeners and empowerers. You cannot have a tier three and then have a tier one right after it. It has to be the other way around. It has to go from smaller to larger as the spell chain goes along. Now that only goes for these three, empower, cost, and intensity, basically. Augmenters, dampeners, and empowerers. That, that only goes for those three. With these, you can only have one of these. You cannot have multiple paradigms, multiple base spell mechanics. You can only have one. You can only have one of these. You can only have one of these. Otherwise, it starts getting confused. Um, but that being said, you've got a lot of spell capabilities that you could actually do with this, and I think that's really, really neat. There's a lot of flexibility and a lot of different combinations. And as you can see, if I got this, and let's go back to, let's say, default again. Shift right click for input, right click for output. Let's rebind that just in case. You see? A huge area gets covered. And we put our wall back. It's real interesting. You could have two of these and have a front door to your base that you could uh, raise and lower just by burning a little bit of spell uh, life points. Now, all every use of this is going to burn life points. Every single one. And I don't have hard and fast numbers on how much, what, you know, how much per cost, what affects how much. All I know is, as the effect of the spell gets stronger, the life, the cost, the life point cost gets stronger, which is where these come in. You need more and more of these. Now, here's the thing. Right now, there's no recipes. <clears throat> there's no recipes on how to make imbued or demonic for either of these. I think the top end right now is one, two, three. I do not think, since these all have the same model, basically, I don't think these are finished yet. So th I think the tier four and tier five of all three of these are still in the process of being made. And that's something to think about. Um, I don't think they've been in implemented yet. I will double check with Way of Time. And if it has, I'll put an annotation right over here and I'll put some notes in the text. But as of right now, I do not think those are creatable. There's no recipes and no methods that I can find for making them. All of these have basic crafting recipes. So I think he's still determining what he wants to do with these. So remember that. But this spell system is very powerful. There's a lot of different combinations. Like, for example, you have ice, let's say. 
if you use default, which is this one right here, to modify it, right? The default spell modifier. It decreases the resistance time, uh, the hurt resistance time of the energy of the entity you fire it at. This would be, uh, oh gosh, projectile ice, effectively allowing the enemy to be hurt more quickly. Can be chained together. So I think you can actually chain this with something else. Um, that's interesting. I didn't actually know you could do that. So there's a lot of this. If you do ice environmental. So now environmental is way up here. As a projectile, it causes snowfall to be created randomly around the target entity. So basically, yeah, if you do this, then if you increase the power of the spell, it increases the number of snowballs that are being basically thrown at the person in question. And if you increase potency, that's down here, so if you use this, it increases the number of snowballs that are being thrown at the target. If you do this, this increases the number that will actually hit them. So you can make gag spells with this. It doesn't really do any damage. You know, with wind, you can actually use wind spells, a projectile, to fire a projectile at somebody and launch them towards the player that brings them towards you. Yeah, or you can make them shoot somebody away. So you can use combinations of spells to basically do a lot of different stuff pull people towards you, shoot people away from you, uh, pull items in towards you, things of that nature. This is a very complex system, and I really do encourage you to just download the world and try the different combinations. Experiment. Just remember, right-click always adjusts the output, and you'll see these little prongs that'll change. Right-click, you'll see. Shift right click is always the input if it has one. And in almost all cases, it goes from darker, you can see there's a lot of gray on that connecting point, to lighter coloration. In these, it's the same thing. There's dark prongs here, there's light colored prongs over here, connecting to the dark input prongs. So it always tries to go from darker to lighter when you look at the inputs on these things and the outputs. But right click is always the output. That's how you can figure it out real quick. Oh, that's the output that's moving. That's what it looks like. Shift right click is always the input if it has one. That's how you can figure out what, real quick what side is the input side. So that's one way to think about it. Uh, yeah. I'm going to link some resources in the description of this video that are going to have... Uh, one's going to be a web page. It's got all the different combinations projectile, self, and melee, all the different elements, offensive, defensive, etc. It'll have all the different combinations in there. You can go over it yourself, try it yourself, and then I'm also going to have the download for this world, so you can download it, load into it, and just experiment. Go crazy. It's okay. And also, in the text, there's going to be a description of the potion system, as well as a complete combination list of all of these basic spells. I really do think that even if you are scared of this, even if you find this daunting, at least try to step into the basic spell system. It's still very useful, and it's real simple to set up. It's real easy to set up, and I really do like that. So there's flexibility. If you just want to get your toes wet, step into the basic. If you really want some power, go advanced. That's what I say. So this has been an incredible journey from tier 1 to tier 5, all the way from walking on water and lava, all the way up to summoning demons and meteors from sky itself. We've got spells, potions, advanced spells, sigils, bound tools, bound weapons, and rituals, all at our disposal. And it's a real powerful mod. Five parts, and I don't even think I scratched the surface yet on all the things you could actually do with this mod. I think, still think there's more out there. But I really do encourage you guys to just load up this map, download it and load it up, experiment with it, learn yourself firsthand, and I think that's going to be a really good way. There's all the resources here on this map. You could try out the rituals yourself. You could try out demon summoning and see what it's like. You can make your own potions and see what, like, what success you have on there. And just get used to it. It's a really good way of doing it. 
So this is Vagram signing off. I really do appreciate you guys following me on this journey through blood magic. It's been five parts, but it has been oh so educational for me. I hope it has been for you. Thank you very much for joining me. As always, I really do appreciate it when you guys swing by and watch my content. I do have a Patreon if you would like to consider supporting me, but if you can only support me in one way, keep watching my videos, keep giving me those likes and thumbs up, keep subscribed, and that'll do it just fine. This is Vagram signing off. As always, goodbye.